Good morning, church family. How you doing today? Wow, nice to be with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hope you had a good night's sleep and you're all awake and you're all rested. Hallelujah. Good morning, Westries. I always uh, see your picture come up, Renee, with Isaac in it. <laughs> That's a good thing to see every morning. Hallelujah. See, he's waving. Hi, everybody. Hello. Wow, you're all jumping on really fast today. <laughs> wow, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous morning out there, isn't it? Yeah, makes you uh, want to get out and take a walk. It did me anyway, but I didn't have time to take a walk this morning. Hallelujah, had some people to call and talk to and encourage this morning. Hallelujah. One thing, um, you know, about everything that's going on is it makes you really take a look at what is around you and all of the things that are happening and, you know, like just everything in general so um but anyway we um we will make it through together hopefully our internet stays up today sorry about wednesday night that was um, a wild ride wasn't it yeah we we made it almost to the end and then ours started to go but then we were able to go on to the phone and then the TV connected back in and it was like back and forth. But Brother Chris did an awesome job. And uh, hopefully if you did get cut off, know that you can go into the church website and uh, still be able to get it. It was It's a well worth message making sure that you hear. If you've missed any of them, go into there and uh, take a look at it. Well, I'm gonna put my glasses on so that I can see Philip Dean because before you were just a blur and now I can see you. <laughs> I That song that says, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Well, I can see clearly now that I have a lens on my eyeballs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, Davies family and Parkers. Good morning, Levines. Good morning, Reverend Mancini. Waving to you as well. Hallelujah. I don't know how to do that. Good morning from Florida. Love you and miss you too. Hallelujah. Good morning, the Heralds. How you doing, Talisha Jones? Nice to see you on this morning. The Boscos are on. Hallelujah. Happy Sunday, friends. Lauren is saying from the church, hallelujah. Yarlets are on, hallelujah. The Poriers, hallelujah. Nice to see all of you guys and your kids. Good morning, Taylor family. God's been good to the Taylor family. Hallelujah. He's bringing them through. Hallelujah. Just uh, an awesome, awesome day to be together and fellowshipping. Good morning, Sarah and the Owens family. Good morning, Nate. Hallelujah, nice to see you. It was nice to hear Nate was shouting over his favorite story being talked about. Hallelujah. I'm just really happy that the kids are staying with it. Good morning, Clinks and the Tolls. And the Baytons, good morning. The Whites, give Mama a hug for me. The Harrises, good morning. Shirley, good morning. Um, the Fernandezes are here. Bueno, I think Bueno means good morning. I could be wrong. Good morning, Miss Hayes. How are you today? And the Barkasies, hallelujah. Good morning, Donna. Nice to have you on board today. Good morning, Sanchez family. Hallelujah. I um, hadn't talked to Reverend Sanchez in a while and reached out to him. God is being good to their family. Hallelujah. And he's he's now joined the teaching field with his wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Uh, but I think that he's just about ready to give her back her job. <laughs> but school's almost out. Good morning, Max, Gaynor, Gabriel. Good morning. Just got off the phone with Wendy this morning. Please uh, keep her and her family in your prayers. Her brother passed away. And so please remember his wife. Uh, they live out of state, and Wendy's doing good, but um, could sure use your prayers, hallelujah, to be a strength to those around, hallelujah. Good morning, Brian, hallelujah. It's just so nice to have all of you. Good morning, Robin family, hallelujah. What a great last name, huh? Robin family. As soon as you say it, you just think of those beautiful Robins that you cannot wait to see show up because you know spring is coming. Maybe that's why uh, Cynthia and Arthur are like so alive because they represent the Robins of spring and that's when everything springs forth. I know that's really, really pushing it, isn't it? Yeah. Good morning, Grace family. How all you little children doing? Hallelujah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really missing a lot of people. Hallelujah. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Kathy. Um, those masks you made me, they are doing a good job. Hallelujah. And um, you made me a purple one. I don't have a lot of purple clothes, but because of our battle with Ohio Youth Camp and our color being purple, thanks to Brian and his prayers that that's what it would be. Um, anyway, she made me a mask and one of them is purple. And so every time I wear it, I feel like I'm supporting Connecticut. Hallelujah for Ohio Youth Camp. And um, so it was a sad day when um, we had to cancel the kids going there. Um, but it's for the best and we all understand it. And they're not even sure they'll be making their final decision come the first week of June of whether or not they can even hold it. Um, if we were like an hour, a couple of hours away, it'd be different, but a 13 hour ride um, is a whole lot. So anyway, we're okay. Good morning, Burl. How are you doing? Hallelujah. The Harrises are on, the Curdies, Kim Taylor. Oh, she, Kim, Call them up and say hi to them yourself. She's saying hi to Yvette and Pearl. That's my job to say hi to them. Just kidding. Just kidding. Hallelujah. Good morning, Selena and the Winther family. Good morning, Emily Manchester. Hallelujah. Good morning, Watkins. And good morning, James Atkins. Nice to have you on board. I was just watching your church the other night. So welcome this morning. Hope you're all doing good <laughs> where you are. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sears. Hallelujah. Hopefully Galen's doing better. Nancy worked him so hard that she just did his back in. And so uh, that's what's happening. We just, us ladies, we keep giving our husbands all those those lists of jobs because we we're home. We just want to get it done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is cute. Uh, last night went on Facebook for a few minutes and um, seen my niece Gianna and she now knows what the Bible is and she can say it. So how cute was that? And um, was fun watching Autumn. Uh, show us how she knows how to say flower. Um, just cracked up over that. But um, pretty good for them to be that young and be able to do their syllables. Yeah. So uh, Gianna goes, Bible. It just too cute. Too cute. Good, good word for, for them to know right off the bat. Hallelujah. So exciting, exciting. Good morning, Krakowskis. Hallelujah. Uh, heard from your mom, Bill, this week, and uh, she had a great dream of me, and um, I needed to hear that dream. Um, sometimes, you know, um, people 
um, will, you know, write things or say things and it kind of makes you wonder, am I doing the right thing? Um, should we still take this stand? Um, you gotta just hear from God. And so got a nice letter from her of a dream she had of me and, uh, it was right on. And so, um, I was like, thank you, Lord Jesus for your confirmation. Hallelujah. Cause that's really important. It's not important what this world says you should be, or you should become What's important is what God says. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sister Mancini and Nick. Hallelujah. Nice to have you on board. Good morning, Ross family. Hallelujah. Nice to have you, Jackie. It's just nice to have everyone this morning. Good morning, Tarvers. Every time I see your name come up, I just want to shout and rejoice that you and Lori are well in your home and uh, this enemy of a disease did not take you guys out, hallelujah. Helped Yancey lose some weight, but now that he's back to being able to eat everything, I can hear him giggling right now. Um, I'm sure he's eating you out of house and home, Lori. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Good morning, John Newsom. Nice to have you on board, Sister Janet Capella. I don't know why yesterday I was, um, or a few days ago, um, I was riding in the car and I was thinking about you, Janet, and all of a sudden I could um, just remember your laugh. And it was uh, so evident that I could almost hear you laughing and uh, your little, little chuckle laugh you have. Um, just makes you really remember your family, doesn't it? Good morning, Marie, nice to have you on board. Hallelujah. And uh, I see Nancy sending love to her family. That's why we talk for a little while so that you do get a chance to um, to be able to share. Good morning, Jim and Judy. So happy that you're listening in this morning. We've been really praying for you folks as well and uh, holding you up in prayer. And uh, God, he's a strengthener, isn't he? He just strengthens us and brings us through all of the battles and uh, we're able to make it. Hallelujah. To our church family, the June calendar is coming out and uh, our great team, uh, they put into the calendar all of our online sites and uh, the times that they're on and how you can get to them. So uh, take advantage of that and uh, that'll be good for you. And I know the big question on everybody's mind is when, when, when do we go back to church? Well, it's more like when do we go back into the building that is our church? Yeah, that's that's what it more is because uh, we have been fed uh, to overflowing. And uh, last night um, we were talking to... Um, a wonderful lady that I love with all of my heart. And um, she has a wonderful church that she goes to. But she said she was watching last Sunday and she said, um, I got fed. She goes, I was just filled up. And she said, I could feel it. And that's what it's all about when you begin to bring the word, hey, Tamara Smith. How are you guys all doing and your children? Hallelujah. I was uh, looking at this picture that came in uh, from a pastor and he had some children from Haiti and this little girl looks like your twins. It was amazing. And then when you look at her like up here, she looks like Jordan, but down here she looks like your twins. And um, it's amazing wherever we go, there's people that look like us. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> I do have to say, Jordan, she just takes the cake because it seems like every foreign country I go into, I see Jordan. It's just hysterical. Um, I think she's got family all over the world that she is related to. Good morning, Sister Marilyn and Sister Diane. Hallelujah. I was so happy, Diane, to hear that Marilyn and Judy took you out to Evergreen Walk for lunch. I bet you loved that. Hallelujah. Sitting out there at Evergreen. 
Um, I was like, oh, I hope they get a seat. I hope they don't have to stand in line a long time because Diane can't stand still. So I'm just curious, how many times did you walk around Evergreen Walk while you were waiting? <laughs> because you're always on the move. <laughs> oh, Diane, she's my hero. Whenever I don't think I can make it, I just think of Diane and say, get up and get going. Hallelujah. It's really, really great. Good morning, Mike. Nice to have you aboard today. Hallelujah. He's just an awesome God, isn't he? Yes, he's just just amazing. Hallelujah. I know that I have been fed amazingly. Um, just God has just been so faithful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know if they came on. I'm looking for the Bruckners. Hallelujah. Haven't seen them come on yet. Maybe they did when I didn't have my glasses on. Good morning, Linda. Hallelujah. And uh, I do miss uh, being in church, but we're going to get back there. And um, God has blessed us. We, we were able to get some free um, uh, things to check our temperatures so that we feel safe when we come in. And some of you will be like, oh, that's ridiculous. And others of you won't care. And I, hey, I'll learn what my regular temperature is on a regular basis. How's that? Um, but we want to be safe. And so um, I, I am going to this week take a really, really good look at what the governor has put out. Um, good morning, Rios. Good morning, Nelson. So nice to see you guys. Good morning, Dorothea. Hallelujah. The pecs are on. But um, um, they, they can't take our worship away. I'm sorry. Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about that later, but anyway, they're, they're saying a hundred, uh, but then other places are able to do half and we can definitely do more and still have distancing. So, um, we, we may have to do a little bit of fighting, but I do know it changes daily. Um, <laughs> it just does. But um, we're having church, and uh, when we do get together, the choir will sing, uh, not as a group, um, but we will sing, hallelujah, and we will sing, and we will worship God. So uh, we just, you, you know, just stay out of it, guys. It, it ain't worth getting into. Good morning, Brissons, hallelujah. So um, good morning, Ashley, Elizabeth, hallelujah. And uh, don't, don't whatever you do miss those Thursday night singing times. Oh, they're just great. They're just amazingly great. Hallelujah. Well, let's get started this morning. I see most of you are on board. And uh, just so, so nice to have you. What are you going to do when, you know, like we do go back to church? Um you're not going to be able to like, um, you know, just run up and hit the screen and wham, bam, there we are. Um, I was thinking about that this morning because um, my mom came over and um, she brought lunch for us today. And uh, she brought one of my most favorite meals growing up was um, Hamburg macaroni with tomatoes. So when, when I opened the door this morning and she had that in her hand, I was like, oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yeah, you know, <laughs> family, family favorite. You just can't get away from good family favorites, can you? No, you can't. So, uh, but then I took her to show her something and all of this stuff. And then I came running upstairs and uh, hit the phone and we were on. Um, that's, that's a little weird. Yeah. And then when it all gets over, I just walk downstairs and start lunch. Like that's, that's different. Um, but I do have to say, I cannot wait to actually stay after church, to talk to people, to new people, to share with them, um, see the kids, uh, see you folks fellowshipping, hear that wonderful sound in my ears. So I'm willing to give up the stairs and all of those things. So when I was talking to Wendy this morning, I said, well, Wendy, I'm going to head up to my closet soon and get ready to tape. And 
then I got thinking, what a great place to record from the prayer closet. Hallelujah. Just shut in with God in this little secret place. Of course, now you all know I'm in the closet. <laughs> uh, we have a guest room and, and it has a it's a big closet, so we put a desk in there for a pastor to be able to study at or whatever. So when I started taping, I thought, ah, oh, this would be a good place to tape right in the closet. Hallelujah. So that's where I tape. Hallelujah. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of your giving. Uh, we just appreciate it. I um, do not have the words um, to thank you um, for helping everything to stay on board and stay focused. And you've just been awesome. And um, so if you don't know, I will repeat this. I know we've been doing it every Sunday morning, but um, you can mail your offerings into P.O. Box 4017. Manchester, Connecticut, 06045, or you can go to the church website, fgichurch.org, and click on Donate. You can also go to that same website and go in and click on Videos, Live Shows, and wham, all kinds of things will show up from singing to stories, things for your children, uh, things to encourage you, answers to prayer, testimonies from people, individuals. It's just loaded in there, and I'm so excited about that. Um, sometimes I just put it up on my screen, and I just let it roll down, like what it, when it, one ends, a new one starts, and that's just really helping me not to miss my family so much, my church family. So please go and do that. You can also go to the Easy Tie app. If you haven't already done this, just uh, download the app and type the church's name or the zip code to choose the church. Hallelujah. And uh, Sister Frida Versch, it is saying that my storage is getting really low. So hopefully we can get this broadcast done today without it um, closing out on us. So um, I'm going to have to go in and I thought I erased enough of the tapings that I've been doing. Apparently I haven't. So hopefully I won't lose you this morning. So we're going to get into our message right now. And um, it, I, I just want to talk to you this morning um, about my heart and I believe God's heart as well. And um, uh, I held on this. And then last week, Reverend Kalinske ministered, and um, and I came back to it this week, and and it's like right where we are. First Peter chapter four verse four says this: "Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you." And this scripture is really, really powerful. And if you remember, we talked in Luke 21, 26, where it said, men's hearts are failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. And we talked about that. Well, there's two things that we have to be careful of today. And one of them is our hearts failing us for fear to where we walk in that fear on a continual basis over and over and over again. And so we have to watch those things very, very carefully. But one of the things that um, is another issue that we can walk into is this riotous living, wherein they think it's strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you. And so it's, um, it was just amazing that where we were going to go was to this riotous living, to this place where um, we begin to run after things that is all around us. And so I do believe with all of my heart that there are none of you that are out there fighting in the streets and burning down buildings and all of those things. And and that is not a freedom of speech, and that is not even 
um, a way for you to have a freedom of speech. That's just people that are just ruining things and tearing things apart and innocent people suffer because of someone's rage and someone's anger. And hopefully you could hear me because my phone is telling me I have really low storage and I'm not sure why. But anyway, uh, maybe this will be the shortest service we've ever had in our entire life. <laughs> but anyway, um, when, when you begin to go through this, this word riot means a violent disturbance of the peace by a crowd take part in a violent public disturbance, a rampage, especially of a large group of people. You rush around in a violent and uncontrolled manner, a period of violent and uncontrollable behavior, typically involving a large group of people. Words pertaining to this is berserk, out of control, wild, violent. How that's what we're seeing, isn't it? That is exactly what we're seeing in our day. And if we're not careful, church, as Christians, we will enter into the same thing. Pastor, I'm not going to go out and burn anything. Nope. But when that is all your talk is, it isn't long until it begins to feed your spirit. And it isn't long until that anger begins to come. God has called the church in this day to be a defender to be someone who brings peace in the turmoil of life. And lately, all that I hear around me is the talk of this. And yesterday, my husband and I, we, we went and we started to take a drive out in the country. And we both had to begin to say to each other, don't go there, don't go there. And we were able to bring ourselves to a peace, a peaceable place. And I'm glad it happened to us because it allows me to talk to you this morning about how easy that is to take on. And I thought last night as I laid in bed and I begin to pray for people, I'm laying in a bed in a place of peace while in other areas of these United States of America, we're burning buildings. That's what we used to watch in other countries that was filled with anger and a lack of God. Hear me, church, today. Hear me really good. You must stay out of the turmoil and you must get in your prayer places. You must get into the word of God. The Bible says when you come to someone, you must have the answer, not be part of the argument, not be part of the distress not be part of what is going on because it wears on you. It, it will take you, the Bible says, unaware and you, you think you're keeping up. But what is happening in the keeping up is you're hearing someone's view and our media and people around us, they all want to go to the bad. They all want to talk about the anger. They all want to put all of these things things and make it. How does it make you feel once you've had a conversation over and over and over and over about evil? It begins to attack you. It makes you weak. It makes you weary. It takes your strength away. And most important of all is it begins to crowd out the God that said he would be there for you. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, it says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. They're over the righteous. God is looking at you. And his ears are open unto their prayers. So that tells me that if I will pray, God will give me what I need. But he'll also give those that I come in contact with what they need as well. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So if I hang on to that evil, God cannot be a part of it. And so I want you to think about your conversation in just this past weekend.
How has that been? Has it been glorifying God? Has it been encouraging scriptures? Has it been on your knees in prayer saying, God, bring this thing to an end. Let peace come back to our land. You must not get involved with the anger, with the evil, with all these things. And next week, we'll talk more about this. You see, this is worse than the coronavirus. This is killing people daily while we still walk on this earth. It is putting an impact on our lives and we must grab a hold of God. We must see God. We must walk forward in this day. It doesn't surprise me that this message today is having a struggle to get out because the enemy, that evil force, does not want you to get on your knees and pray. That evil force does not want you to be an encourager. That evil force is now even trying to say, you're going to pass the coronavirus if you sing. Give me a break. I've been kind, but on that one, you got to stop it. You have got to stop letting the enemy cause you to have fear. We must never lose our song. When you go back and you look at the children of Israel coming out, I was reading portions of that this week. They sang, they worshiped God. And then when it became to a place where they were contented and they begin to move forward in God, they begin to murmur and complain again because everything just wasn't hunky-dory. There wasn't the food that they wanted. We haven't had any meat. We're okay. Listen to me, church. We must rise above this. We must look at what we have. What, what would you do if you came and they were burning down our town? It's easy for you and I to be here grumbling, but grumbling does not move the hand of God. Grumbling stops the hand of God. But prayer, oh, hallelujah. I feel him this morning. Prayer moves the hand of God. Prayer makes God work. In this day, you and I, we must keep our prayer lives alive. This week, I have been so encouraged because we have, I've had two wonderful, wonderful reports come in of people that have taken this time to do exactly what I'm talking to you about this morning. And God has went back into their lives and dug out their very being and they have obtained the victory. I am so excited to see what God is going to do in their lives. And it's because we have had to push. I can tell you, those two people pushed everything aside and got connected, focused, not looking here, not looking there, but focused on God. And God has set them free, talked to them, took that old root and just ripped it out of their being that new life can come forth. How exciting is that? But they did not get there grumbling, looking at all of this stuff, and that's all they want to talk about. It just plain gets old really quick. I want to talk about the good things of God. I want to lift God up that in this day I will be a soul winner. So how many people have we talked about all of the ugliness, okay? And how many people have we talked to them about the saving power of Jesus Christ, the peacemaker, the one who said, I'll give you peace that will pass all of your understanding. How many people have you taken their hands this week and just took a hold of them and said, let's pray for our country. Come on, church. That's our job. That's our job to do. How many of us have bound in prayer 
for our families, for their lives, for our friends, for our co-workers, for our jobs. It's easy to complain. It's easy to even get caught up in someone else's complaint and it isn't long until you think it's yours. This whole thing is pushing us right back into what we worked so hard to get out of. We must never go back to prejudicism. We must know that God created all people and he created all of us equal. We are never going to be successful when we let anger, rage, and hate control our lives. Hallelujah. We must change these things. You're no greater than anyone else, no matter what color you are. God created us equal. And when he created us, what we must know, and we must know it, he looked at it, every single thing, and he said, it is good. Now, I've traveled into missions. One of the things that has bothered me the most is people killing their own people. We must rise up in this day. Get rid of your prejudices. Get rid of your anger because I, you know, I was thinking this morning and, and I've been awake pretty much all night long, just praying and asking God for his direction of where to go and how to get you to stay alive and keep your prayer lives up that you will not fall to this evil. You must not fall to this evil day. The Bible says we must look up. The Bible says the harvest is ripe and the fields are empty. I thought of that song that I sing. My house is full, but my fields are empty. It's not enough for you to just sit and you watch your Christian programming while the world goes to hell. We must be preachers in this day. We must be reapers in the fields. We must go in. We must find that fruit that wants to be delivered but has no idea how it's going to get there. Who's going to pick me? You look at a cornfield. It's full of ripe corn, but someone's got to go in and get it. Yes, there's a few in there that won't be ripe, that won't be ready. And if we're not careful, we'll say, well, I go in there, but all I find is it's, it's not fully grown. I, I might have to help it along. No, you just get in there and you reap the harvest. Get your wheelbarrows out, church. It's, it's a time for us, the church, to arise in this day. You can run after all kinds of things, but we better run after the purpose of why Jesus died on the cross. It was not so I could prosper. It was not so I could have everything. It was not even so that I could just live in a peaceful, restful, smell the roses, hallelujah place. My job is to carry out the mission of Jesus Christ. And that was to go and be a witness for Jesus Christ, not to cower away, not to just get so caught up in all the things of the world. I'll be honest with you as a pastor, I'm getting sick and tired of the church, not just mine, but the whole church in general, trying to just bring the world into it, bring the world in so you feel like you fit into this world. You better not try to fit into this world. You better not try to fit in the garment of this world. You better not put on the garments of this world. You better put on the breastplate of righteousness. You better let God dress you in the bridegroom's dress because I'm telling you today, he's coming back for a bride that the Bible says has made themselves ready. There's a work that's got to take place. There's something you and I have got to do. And we can't just do it because we go to church. We've got to do it because we're sold out, sold out. We've got to get ourselves on fire. We got to stop sitting in our homes saying, these people are doing this, these people are doing this. I don't know why we can't do that. Do it and I'll tell you why. Because it's going to take away from what God wants. You need to get on your knees and say, God, 
What do you want me to do that I may win the world for Jesus Christ? Oh, if we would get out winning souls, we'd be less concerned about fitting into this world. It isn't long. I mean, we've come to a place where we can drink now as long as we don't do it in great excess. And we can even go and share wives as long as someone, our other spouse, shares a wife. Give me a break. You get into that word of God and you get into prayer and God will clean your lives up. That's what I grew up in. I grew up in a God that talked to me, visited me, convicted me. That Holy Ghost, the Bible says, that will lead you and guide you in all truth. I want to ask you, have you spoke in that tongue every day this week? Is it right there on your lips ready to come forth? Is it make an intercession to the Father for your life? You can say, Pastor, you're acting angry today. No, I'm not. I am not angry and don't put that on me. I am passionate. I am jealous for the kingdom of almighty God. And when I see people going down the broad way to hell because we want to be at the beaches and we want to be in all of these places and we don't even care because, hey, we can catch up later. You may not be able to catch up later. There were five virgins that did not keep their lamps full. That's what blessed me about that woman of God. She said, Pastor, I felt full. I felt like there was no more I could take in. That's what we have to have, church. That's what we've got to take part in, church. We've got to stop looking at everybody else. If we are full, God will lead us to the someone else that needs us. And we will have the Holy Ghost speak to us what is needed. And then we have to be careful or pride comes and we begin to think, oh, this is me. It's not you. This isn't even me. This is God. I prayed this morning and said, God, fill my mouth with what is needed to help my church and the church of Jesus Christ to stop running down everybody and go win souls. Hallelujah. You're our greatest example. Jesus is our greatest example. He did not condemn the soldiers. He did not condemn those who, who he had some healed. And they watched him as they screamed, crucify him, crucify him. He kept his mind on the task that lied ahead that I could have salvation. And that salvation was given to me freely. And he said, freely you have received. Now get out there and freely give it. Walk away. Give it to people. Get out of yourselves. Get out of your little places and find people that need the house of God. In this day, we need Jesus like we've never needed him in our lives. I shared a little story with the young people the other night, and I have never forgot it. Jesus is my very best friend. Oh, dear God, I have all kinds of friends, but Jesus is my dearest friend. He gave his life for me. He set me free. He took me out of bondage. He allowed me to never be an alcoholic. He allowed me to never have Alzheimer's. He has allowed me to never ever have emphysema. Do you know how many of my family have died? Because they could not quit smoking. Oh, hallelujah. The only thing. Thing that nicotine has ever touched my mouth was an old, old cigar that was in an old playhouse of a house we rented in East Hartford. And my brother and I, we found it way up on the top. And I took one puff of that, almost killed me, choked me half to death. That's it. Never had it again. Had one little taste of champagne. Totally <laughs> mistake. And I wasn't even old enough to Hey everyone, we're still here. We are still live with Pastor Kalinsky. She's at her house, obviously. Uh, that didn't work, but I just want to come on and help finish what she was saying this morning because 
If you did not hear the woman of God this morning, she was right on 1 million percent. Everything she was saying was the word of God. And we as the church, we need to hear that. We need to hear that this, I, I was about to share it. Uh, tell everybody, get everybody, send this message out to everybody because the world needs to hear what Pastor Kalinsky was just sharing this morning because it was power, power of God. Everything was truth that she said this morning, the word of God. It's what our world needs. Our world needs to hear the truth of this word. We as the church need to understand the power of God and what God is, what God is trying to do. There's, you know, you, you see on the news, you, there's a lot happening in our world. The church it's our time to rise right now with the love and the power of Jesus Christ to help our world, to help what, what they need. Jesus came. Jesus came and in everything he did, he showed his love and he showed his power. He showed by example. He didn't get caught up in what everybody else was doing. It didn't matter to him. He had a vision. He had a goal and a purpose in mind. And we as the church, we got to have that same thing, the vision and the power of God in what is happening right now. I've been thinking, it's funny pastor mentioned it this morning all week these words have come come into my mind uh, uh that jesus said he's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle that is what he's coming back for he is looking for a church for a people that are willing to say i'm not going to get caught up in the anger i'm not going to get caught up in the plight of our world i'm not going to get caught up in well they're doing this and th no i'm going to live my life according to the word of god and god is trying to come and cleanse the church so the church church has what the world is looking for. The church can't have what the world is looking for if the church has the world inside of them. You know what I'm saying? We got to have exactly what God is looking for according to the word of God. And you, you who are listening right now, you can be a part of that. How? By getting into the word of God, by getting on our knees and praying and seeking the face of God. And I'm telling you, things are going to change. It broke my heart this week that I, I, I heard... I heard a, uh, a Christian group, the lead singer came out of this Christian group and he said, I don't even believe in God anymore. My God, it broke my heart because we, the church, this is what's going around. If we don't stay focused on God and we just get caught up in what's going on around us, we too can lose our belief in God. Hallelujah. We got to believe in God. We got to trust in God. You may not know all the answers to everything that's going on, but get on your knees because you serve a God who does have all the answers and you can be a part of what God is doing. So hallelujah, let's do this together, church. You and I, with our pastor linked together, we can make a difference. Hallelujah. The one thing I love about God, uh, he said this, he said, blessed are the peacemakers. What does that mean? It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we don't stand up and, and believe in what, but we bring peace to people in need and we, the church, we can bring that peace. Why? Why do we have peace? We have peace because we serve a God of peace. We serve the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. How can you have peace? It's by Jesus. How can you have power? It's by Jesus. How can you make it through? It's by Jesus. How can you change that person that's that's right next door to you right now? You know the ones you've talked to, the ones that pastors mentioned, the ones that are angry. How can you make a difference in them? How can you do it? Bring them peace. Bring them the peace of God. Hallelujah. Bring them the love of God. Tell them exactly what Jesus did. I know I say this all the time, but it's so true. He said, you know, the old cliche, what would Jesus do? WWJD. Well, what would Jesus do is exactly what needs to be in our mind. What would Jesus do in this situation? What would Jesus do in the time that we're living right now? How would Jesus react to this? I want, that's exactly what I want in my life. And that's what our pastor is talking about doing it the way Jesus did it. And hallelujah, we can't do that if we're not close to him. We can't do that if we're not talking to him. We can't do that if we're not seeking his word. See, people are afraid to seek the word of God. They're afraid to get down because they know it's going to require them. But my God, this morning as we stand on the word of God, we are going to do that today. Get into God's word. Find God's word. Pray God's word. Hallelujah. And you will find the peace and the power that our world is looking for. And we, the church, we, the church of Jesus Christ, we, the church worldwide, we, the church, FGIC, we've got 
hallelujah, what our world needs, hallelujah, we just need to stay strong, stay full of the power, stay full of the fire, stay full of the faith, stay full of the peace of God, of the presence of God in our lives, hallelujah, hallelujah, and what we're going to do, we're going to help, hallelujah, we're going to be there, uh, when, like our pastor said, when that bridegroom groom comes, we're going to be there, the church is going to be there, the church worldwide will be there, because Jesus is coming soon, and you better be ready, and you know what you can do? You know, you know, when we when we get ready for church, we have to get ourselves ready. We have to, you know, we comb our hairs, you know, like not not me, not combing my hair. What do we do? We brush our teeth, we put on the nicest clothes. You know what? This is a time right now. It's time to get ready for church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church of Jesus Christ is about to go live. And you know what we need to do? We need to get ready right now because he's coming. The time is coming down. I don't know about you, but Sunday mornings, I look I look forward to when 10 o'clock comes. Hallelujah. I look forward to that time and I make myself ready. We get the family together. Hallelujah. Well, right now, God is about to go live in this world. And we, the church, have got to get ready for it. Get your families together. Get your friends together. Make ourselves ready because God is going live and we are what the church has need of this morning. Hallelujah. I love it today. Thank you, Pastor, for your word. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for taking, taking your time. Hallelujah. And seeking God and making sure you have the mind of God. Hallelujah. And that's what we all need to have, the mind of God. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I don't know. You know, who knows why God did all this today? But I know this. The word is going out. The devil, he ain't going to win this battle. No, no. The devil, he ain't going to win today. This is God's day. This is the day of Jesus Christ. He ain't going to win. Maybe it's time. Maybe, maybe somebody, maybe, maybe your internet will go dead. You pick up the phone. You finish the message. You talk to somebody. You preach to somebody today because that's what God is looking for the church to do and we can do it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. No matter what your need is today, Jesus can meet you. If you're out there and you need God to help you and meet your needs, just talk to him right now. Maybe God has stirred you today. Talk to him right this very moment. Speak to God. Hallelujah. Talk to him. Communicate with him right now. You know, I've been thinking about something really powerful. And, uh, and, and there, was, there was a man in the Bible, Thomas. And I know Thomas gets a bad rap. But Thomas had a need. He needed to know that it was Jesus. And what did he have to do? He had to reach out and touch Jesus. Well, you you may be kind of lost in the hour of the day. And you may not understand everything that's going on. But just like Thomas did, if you would reach out to Jesus, you will feel him. You will feel the power of God. You will feel the presence of God. Reach out and touch his hands this morning. Reach out and touch Jesus. Because Jesus is outstretched for you. And just like Thomas, he will feel that he is the Savior. And his belief in, in God will continue on. And Thomas went on and he did a great work. Don't mind. Don't, doesn't matter the question. It's just reach out this morning. I mean, let's pray. Let's pray right now. Let's just seek God all across, all across Connecticut, all across the airwaves right now, all across Facebook Live. Let us pray the church. Let's have a prayer meeting right this very moment, right in your home, right in your living room, right in your yard, right in your porch, right in your, right in your basement, right in your easy chair right now let's have a prayer meeting right now and let's reach God at this moment and this hour because the church needs it that God is relying on you and I the church to continue this on hallelujah let's pray right now dear heavenly father Lord Jesus oh God we feel you this morning we feel your presence God in the house we feel your presence on Facebook God God we are looking God God we are looking to you you are the author and the finisher of our faith Lord Jesus I know this. Hallelujah. In the end, we are going to win. And right now, I'm not going to give the devil no place today, God. I'm not going to give him no place today, Lord. He has no place here. He has no place in my mind today, Lord God. So he's gone today, Jesus. No place in their minds, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, by the power of God, we stand as a church. We stand unified in the power of God. 
Help us today, Lord Jesus, Lord. God, help us, Lord God, to overcome these little things that come to our mind. God, we are warriors in Jesus Christ. You are our champion, and we are fighting for you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're fighting on your behalf, Lord Jesus, today. We stand in the gap. We stand on our knees in prayer, Lord Jesus. God, we stand and pray for those in our world that are hurting right now. Those in our world that are confused right now, Lord Jesus. Those in our world that are angry right now. We stand, Lord God, and we bring your love and your peace, God, and your salvation to them, Lord Jesus. You've given us the answer, Lord God. God, we put away all of our selfish things, and we put away all the things that are not of you today, Lord God. Hallelujah, God, and we come to you, Jesus. God, we present ourselves to you, God. Wash us, make us clean today, Lord. Hallelujah, that you're trying to present us, God, as a church without spot before God himself, Lord. God, help us today, God. Cleanse us, Lord Jesus. Make us stronger. Let your spirit, Lord God, be in our lives. God, your presence be in our homes. Let it be in our minds and our hearts today. God, for those things, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We love you, God. God, if those are out there today, if they're sick or they're not saved, reach them today, God. Reach out to their lives. Reach into their hearts today, Lord Jesus. Touch people right where they are, Lord God. And God, don't let us just settle back in on our easy chairs, but let us get up and do the work that you have called us to do, Lord God. Let us get up and fight this, 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 uh, this battle that we're fighting, God. And it's not against flesh and blood. As much as people on the news would like you to tell you it's against flesh, it's not. It's against principalities, God. It's against spiritual wickedness, God. And for those, we can stand and rise against them, God. God, with the power, hallelujah, that we have in you, we thank you for that, Jesus. We love you today. Thank you for coming into our homes. Thank you for your presence being in our homes and our lives today, Lord God. We carry this on. God, we look forward to seeing what you're going to do. God, this morning, I'm refreshed, refreshed with vision today because, God, I'm going to see what you're going to do, God. Why? Why? Because I'm one with you today. Thank you for our church and our pastor, our leaders, the great parishioners of our church. God, bless them all today. Bless them with your power and your spirit. Bless all those that surround them today, God. We love you. We give you praise. We give you victory today. We worship our Savior today, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, and Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God today. Glory. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel God today. I hope you do too. Amen. I felt when pastors preach and I feel it now. Don't, there was no, no difference and I thank God for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today's going to be a great day. Today is the last day of May and it's a great day. Hallelujah. Tomorrow's June 1st. Tomorrow's going to be a great day as well. Church, continue on. Continue on with God's love. Continue on with what God is doing. Hallelujah. See what God is doing in our world. Be blessed today. Be strengthened and edified in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I love God for that. We're so blessed to be a part of this great church. You know what? We're blessed. This is how you can count your blessings. We are blessed today because we are smack dad in the middle of a move of God. Amen. And we, the church, are a part of that. And hallelujah, I thank God for that. Be a part of that. Be blessed today. Get with your family, friends. Enjoy God's day. Come back tonight, 7 p.m. Everybody say it, 7 p.m. Come on back tonight. Brother Nick Chokas is going to be sharing with us tonight. It's going to be wonderful. Who knows? I'm sure they blessed us so much with their song last time. I'm sure that they may work that in again this time. So tonight, come back 7 o'clock. And we just thank you. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for joining. 7 p.m. It's going to be a beautiful night. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. Look at it. I came. I almost came outside, but it was so bright out here. Woo, it's bright. That's, you know why it's bright? Because God is shining today. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you don't know that, he is shining today. So God bless you. We will see you. I see Brother Nick. Yes. Amen. Ooh, going to preach on a Roman anomaly. You've got to come back and hear that tonight. I'm excited. That's disturbed me. Hmm, I'm intrigued. So, and they will be singing. So we will see you all tonight. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. We love you. We love you, church family. And we will see you all soon. God bless. I just have to figure out how to end this in this way. <laughs>